Hello Algebra 2. Now we're going to go over 6.2 and in uh, its simplest form, the way I would put it, 6.2 is about combining functions. You can combine them in a number of ways. You can add functions, subtract them, multiply them, and divide them. These are pretty straightforward. Then we can compose them. I'll, I'll go over what that means, of course. Um, uh, it's probably the trickiest thing that um, out, of, out of this group that students come across. Um, then when we're, as we talk about each of these, we're going to talk about the domains of these functions, of these combinations. Uh, what kind of values can go into these functions? And, uh, and that's determined by the functions that, that we start with. Okay? So um, let's get started here. All right, let's say we have two functions, f of x and g of x. f of x will be the square root of x and g of x will be um, let's say x to the third minus five okay so we've got these two functions and we want to combine them in all of these different ways first we'll do the first four adding subtracting multiplying dividing so if I want to add them that's f of x plus g of x. Well, that's the square root of x plus x to the third minus 5. Okay. Uh, there's no like terms there. Of course, in the practice problems, there'll, there'll be nicer functions, you know, created to be added together and subtracted. But just to show you, all I'm doing is adding this function to this function. If there were like terms, I could bind them, and that would be the end of it. Um, now, the thing about this is, what's the domain, okay? What's the domain of this function? Um, the domain depends on what's the domain of each of these functions. And the domain uh, of this final function is basically going to be the intersection of those two functions. So this function here, what kind of values can you put into this function? That's what the domain means. What values can go into it? Uh, there's there's no um, where well, there's no problem. Well, there's no problem with any value of x here. I can put in positives, negatives, zeros, fractions, anything. As long as it's a real number, um, then everything's fine. We can do that. Okay. But what about this function, the square root of x? What kind of values can you put into the square root? What kind of values can you square root? Um, you can square root 4, 16, uh, 64, you can square root 2, 3, 5. Um, you can square root 0, but what can you not square root? You can't square root negative numbers. Okay, So the domain for this guy right here is all non-negative real numbers. Uh, and even though the domain for this one is any real number, uh, positive, negative, 0, anything, the domain for this new function is going to be the intersection of those two uh, domains, of these two domains. So this one was all of them. This one was only the positives and zero. So the new domain is all the positives and zero. Okay, so let's say uh, it's all of the reals, uh, you know, that are not negative. You know, whatever notation we want to make up, uh, we could say non-negative real numbers, okay? Just however you want to express that that's what the domain is. So here we go with subtraction. Uh, f of x minus g of x, the square root of x, minus the whole function g of x. Sometimes what gets missed is you'll just throw a negative in there, not put parentheses, and wind up not getting enough things negative, especially if the negative needs to be distributed. Here's g of x, f of x minus g of x. This is going to be the square root of x minus x to the third and minus a negative 5, so plus 5. You see what I mean? The mistake could be that you just put minus x squared minus 5 and the minus 5 does not get changed to a plus 5. So what's the domain? Same deal. Um, this is all non-negative real numbers. This is all real numbers. So the domain is all non-negative real numbers. Uh, multiplication. So if I wanted to do the square root of x times the 
uh, f of x times g of x, that's the square root of x times x to the third minus five. Okay, so now we get to be able to combine them because um, now we have <coughs> two uh, things with what we could convert into rational exponents times each other. So x to the one half power times x to the third minus five. So let's distribute this. So x to the one half times x to the third, they have the same base, so I can add their exponents together. Uh, one half and three, this is six halves, so altogether we would have x to the seven halves. Remember we add the exponents together. So uh, then distribute the x to the one half to the negative five and you have minus five x to the one half. Okay, what's the domain? Um, well, again, uh, we're just combining them together. The things that are going to cause troubles are if we try to put in a negative number, we're not going to have a problem here, but we will have a problem here. We can also see because this is an even, this has an even denominator, this means I'm going to take the an even root, a square root. And as we discussed in the previous sections, um, you cannot um, you know, have negative numbers go into an even root. Um, so what's the domain then? It's all, again, all non-negative real numbers, non-negative real numbers, and division. So if I want to do f of x divided by g of x, uh, this is what it would look like. It would be x to the uh, square root of x over x to the third minus 5. Uh, and there's really nothing to do here. There's nothing to simplify it. Um, there, there's, you know, nothing's going to happen here. But now the domain part of it is going to be a little different. The domain still is, obviously, we still can't put negative numbers into the square root, so still no. Um, but also, what else causes a problem? This is the question we ask about the domain. What's going to cause a problem? What kind of things basically do I exclude from the values that I can put into my function? I can't put in negative numbers. But I also couldn't put anything into the denominator here that would cause the denominator to be what? To be a zero. You can't have a zero in the denominator. It's, it's bad. So um, what do we do about that? How do we figure out the values that can't go into the denominator? Well, if x to the third minus 5, so we'll kind of put a semicolon there to show we're figuring some different things out. x to the third minus 5, when that's equal to zero in the denominator, the denominator is equal to zero, then, um, then we have a problem. So let's solve for x. Find out what values of x cause the denominator to be 0. So x to the third equals 5. Add 5 to both sides. How do I isolate x? Take the cubed root of both sides. The cubed root cancels out the cube. Third root cancels out the third power. So now we have x is equal to a cubed root of 5. So the domain is all non-negative. real numbers except the cubed root of 5. Okay? All right. So now we're going to talk about composition of functions and uh, their domain as well. So the concept of a composition of functions can somebody, sometimes be a tricky one. So I like to think of functions as factories. Okay? Let's think of two factories. What, what does a factory do? Well, it takes in materials, takes stuff in, and then stuff comes out. Uh, you know, a factory might uh, bring in plastic and produce ping pong balls, or might bring in metal and fiberglass and, um, you know, fabric and leather and all these kinds of things and put out a car. Um, but uh, for a, a simple example, Let's say that this one is a table factory. It brings in and makes wooden tables. So it brings in wood. So income trees minus the leaves. So uh, logs. Logs come in. Lumber of some kind comes in. And um, those are the things that go in. That's like putting in an x into your function. So in come things. In come the, the, the wood into this factory. And out comes a table. Okay, that's what this factory does. It makes tables from wood. Um, this factory, let's say, 
is a green paint factory. It paints things green. Uh, so in comes what? Well, the green paint factory is pretty open to suggestions, so they take pretty much anything. They're going to take in, um, you know, uh, a house or a car or a cat or a bird, whatever. You bring in something to the green paint factory, and out comes something that got painted green, okay? Uh, but a composition of functions is when you put two functions together in such a way that whatever comes out of this function goes straight into this function. Okay, so whereas before each of these had their, their own individual um, functions, their own individual things that they did, uh, stuff that they produced, um, now they produce something unique together. Okay, so what, what is this composition? What is this um, union of these two functions? You know, these two companies had a merger. What would they make? Well, this function, and this, this order is important. Um, this function, this factory, uh, brings in wood and out comes a table and immediately uh, you can imagine they just get crunched together and, and um, the, there's no longer maybe an outside here it goes right into the green paint factory so what comes out well wood goes in comes out here a table directly into this factory here so what this composition makes is green tables Okay, so you put these two together, you compose these together, whatever comes out of here goes into here, and now together these functions uh, make green tables. That's what they make, okay? So that's the way a composition of functions work. Um, say we want f of g of x, right? This is like, g of x is like the tree factory. Uh, so not the tree factory, but they take in trees. Uh, it's like the table factory, right? Something happens in g of x first. Then the green paint factory is like f of x. f of x is next. Then it does its thing. Okay, so g of x does its thing, and then f of x does its thing. So let's look real quickly at an example, um, both in numbers and then just in general functions. Okay, so if f of x were e equal to 6x squared, and g of x were equal to x squared plus 2. Um, let's find out what f of g of 2 is. Okay, So f of g of 2, well, we know what g of 2 means. It means plug in a 2 for x into the function g and see what comes out. So g of 2 is 2 squared, that's 4. 2 squared. Put a 2 in for x, right? 2 in for x, and that becomes 4, plus 2. That's altogether 6. Okay, well, then we take that 6, we take that table, and then we put it into the green paint factory. We put it into f. So now we take this 6, now we're going to evaluate f of 6. Okay, so that's 6 times 6 squared. That's uh, 6 times 36, that is 216. All right, so f of g of 2, uh, we take g of 2, that turns out to be 6. We take 6 and put it into f of x. f of 6 turns out to be 216, so this is 216. Now let's talk about in general, f of g of x, the function. Uh, well, I'm going to start to write f. I'm going to start. So, Start to write f, there's a 6, and then, whoa, there's an x here. What do I do about that? Well, just like here where I would replace the x with a number, I'm going to replace the x. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with the entire function g. So g is x squared plus 2. So I'm going to put in x squared plus 2. Uh, and this is also squared. And I can see I'm going to need to pick this up uh, for a few moments in the next video. Um, so I'll see you in the next one.